Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about what happens if your ferret gets lost or runs away. So I know that I take my ferrets outside. Lots of people take their ferrets outside. Um, some people use harnesses. For me, I don't put my ferrets on leashes. They just don't do well. I mean, I didn't really train them as babies to have them on leashes. So I don't really do that often. So basically I use a playpen um, and I don't leave them unattended. Or I use one of those Amazon tents that's for cats, <laughs> but I use it for the ferrets. Um, but anyway, so if your ferret were to ever be outside or get lost or just somehow get out of your house or get lost in your house, what are the tips and tricks and what is recommended to get that ferret back as quickly as possible? Um, so let's jump right into the video and go over those things. Let's say that you um, lose your ferret in your house, which is a possibility. I have definitely freaked out um, where I can't find one of the four of them because I do let them free roam in my bedroom, for example, the like box spring, my cats have ripped a hole in the bottom of my box spring. So basically not only do the cats go up there, but the ferrets will go up there any chance they can get into my bedroom. They also have a tendency to get into my dresser drawers from behind and get up inside of there. And so, you know, sometimes it can be, you can freak out when you like can't find them. And they're so tiny that they really are great at hiding. But there can be times where your ferret went somewhere and you really just don't know how they got there or where they went. Um, so if you lose your ferret in your house, you're definitely going to want to put out some kind of treats, call their name. You're going to want to have something squeaky, something that's going to get their attention. You're definitely going to want to look for them. Um, I'm not really as concerned in this video as with ferrets being lost in a house. Although if your ferret is lost in your house and they do something like get into a vent, that is obviously going to be a huge issue. But this video is more focused on ferrets that get outside. So if you have a pet that you free roam um, and you have people that are constantly in and out of your house, it's really important that they know that there's a ferret in there and that when they open that door to come in and out, that they pay attention that that ferret doesn't slip out or run out. Um, it can happen and ferrets, like I said, weasel waits at the bedroom door to get out. So he will run out of his bedroom door in a New York minute. So I imagine that it would be the same if they really wanted to try to get outside. So let's say that you have your pet outside and you somehow he, they slip their harness, they slip their leash, they're inside of one of those baby pens and they somehow get lost and they go missing or you're holding them and somehow they slide out of your hands and they take off running, whatever the situation is that your ferret got lost. Because this happens a lot and it happens a lot more than I think people really realize. Um, and I know it's probably really easy to say, well, how do you let that happen? I have knock on wood have never lost one of my ferrets, but I do see posts constantly about missing ferrets. Um, so accidents happen. It just happens sometimes. And so it, it, this isn't so much about passing fault. It's more if an accident happens or your ferret does get lost or goes missing, what should you do? What are the top things that you should do that's going to help you the most to get your ferret back? There's a good possibility that you may never get your ferret back. But if you were going to, here are some things that are going to be most important that you do that will give you the most likelihood to have that ferret return to you safely. So first and foremost, if your ferret goes missing outside, you're going to want to obviously immediately start looking for them in the area where they went missing. Um, it, you know, I would even just walk around anywhere where they went missing. If it's in a neighborhood, I would get your friends, your relatives, your sisters, your parents, your brother, whoever, the whole everybody and start looking for that ferret. If for God forbid you can't find your ferret, you're going to want to go back inside and grab something that smells like them. Grab some food, some water, grab their a piece of their bedding. If you use cage liners, grab a cage liner. If they have a, a soft cover, grab that. Grab their litter box. You want something that smells like them. Ferrets have a pretty good sense of smell. And so this is similar to what people do with cats. They put their litter boxes outside because the cats can smell it and it kind of lets them know like, oh, this is my scent. This is where I go. And that way, if your ferret is, you know, up underneath the porch or something to that effect, there's something out there that smells like them and that will hopefully draw them closer and back towards your home. Um, so I would definitely do that um, is one of the very first things I would do if I could not find them and I searched all over the area. 
after that, you're going to want to get on the phone and contact the local shelters nearby your house. You want to contact uh, local pet stores that are by your house. Um, the vet, so vets offices that are by your house, basically anywhere that cares for, sells pet supplies, any of that, you're going to want to contact them and let them know that your pet is missing. And then you're going to want to, if possible, provide them with a photo, um, just so that if for some reason somebody brings that ferret in, they kind of know you're going to want to give them your phone number, your address, whatever contact information that you have and a picture if possible. Um, and you're going to want to do that because I have a friend that works for a pet store and I cannot tell you how many times she has had someone come in and say, I found a ferret. What do I do with it? So the very first place that these people take the ferrets is either the vet in a vet's office, the rescue, they take them to animal control or they take them to a pet store. Those are like the four places that people that find ferrets take them. And the other thing that people do is they post them online. But if you have it and you're trying to, you can't keep it or you don't know what to do with it, nine times out of 10, people will take them somewhere that deals with pets. So your best bet is just make sure everyone nearby that has anything to do with animals knows that your ferret is missing and they know how to get a hold of you. I would recommend that you post on social media. This is probably should be like, I guess, second maybe um, to looking for them. Social media is so powerful. It's so incredibly powerful when it comes to missing animals, at least in this day and age it is. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever, put your ferret's picture and your information all over, just spread it like wildfire. Um, basically that is like social media and social networking is, I can't even tell you how many times ferrets are found as a result of that. It's just easier to get that information out to the masses quickly. People share it. It's just something they do. I know I share every single post I see where there's a missing animal and then so do like every single person that I know. And so it becomes this rolling thing. Um, I was watching some funny videos or not funny videos, but some videos of ferrets kind of who've gotten lost that had funny stories and every single one that I watched, um, they were all reunited as a direct result of social media. So next you want to put them on next door, Craigslist, I don't, wherever, just you're missing a ferret, let everyone know. Um, that is really, really key too. I believe that. And then you're just going to want to continue to look. You're also, I would recommend if at all possible that you make flyers and you post them everywhere, um, on your street, anywhere in that area that you lost your ferret. And I would feel comfortable even saying like up to a mile away. I know it seems really crazy that to think that your ferret could go that far, but you just really don't know. And animals will amaze you. It's crazy how some of these stories where pets just end up on the whole other side of the country. Um, it's strange, but it happens. I mean, animals definitely do crazy things that we don't really expect. So I would definitely put up flyers if at all possible. Uh, and I would just continue to look and I would really hold on to hope. It's a possibility that you'll get your ferret back. Um, so that's, those are the things that you're going to want to do immediately. If your ferret goes missing, um, there are some services that I believe where they help find pets. I know in Maryland, there's a company called dogs fighting dogs. Um, and this is like the coolest thing ever. I'll put a link to the information. I've never used them. I do know someone who has used them. Basically they have tracking dogs and these dogs will find not only other dogs, but they'll find cats. They can find basically anything and they will come and they will track your pet and they are really successful. Um, I think there was even like a TV show that they made about it, but I had a friend that used this comp this, this company to find their, their dog. And it's amazing to me. Um, it's really cool. You could do that if you had the money to do that. Um, that's an option, I guess. So those are some things that you're going to want to do. The first things that I listed are probably the most important. Um, and, and you really just, and you want to be quick. You want to do those things as fast as possible. Ferrets are not prone to being outside. They're not, they're sometimes overly friendly with other animals. They don't really know not to be. They don't really have a whole lot of fear because they're so domesticated at this point that their um, instincts as far as like nature and protecting themselves, they just aren't equipped like that. They're, we've just domesticated them to the point where their survival, they put, they would probably put themselves in more danger than than they would even intend to because they just don't know any better. Um, so, and you know, they're, they're not, they're just not used to that kind of life. At least, at least a lot of the ferrets, um, that we have that have domesticated, maybe some ferrets are 
would be better. It depends, I guess, on how they're raised and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, they're not really meant to be outside, especially in, in hot weather, super cold weather. Just it's not good. So the faster you act, the better off that you will be in trying to get your ferrets back. Um, there are some things that you can also do um, to try to prevent this. So we'll go over some of the, I'm going to go over a couple things that some items like what kind of leashes are best for ferrets and um, um, some other things that you can do to maybe kind of help you if you were to lose your ferret or help you maybe not lose your ferret. So some of the preventative things that you can do or just some preparation just in case anything ever happens is you can microchip your ferret. It's no different than microchipping your cat or your dog. Your vet can do it. It's not normally too expensive, maybe 20 or $30, depending on where you get it done. They just put the microchip in, you register it to you. If anything happens, they can scan your ferret and the ferret will come back registered to you. They contact you and voila, you got your ferret back. <laughs> so um, microchipping, I highly recommend your vet can normally do that. They even sometimes have clinics like the animal shelters I know in Maryland will do these like spay and neuters for dogs, but they'll also do like microchipping um, things where you can just go in and pay like a flat fee and just get it, get your, your animal microchipped. So I think that's really great if you're at all possible, you can do that. Also make sure you have a good clear picture of your pet. If you were ever need to make flyers, you're gonna wanna have a photo that's clear that they can you can see the colors and the markings and their facial features so that you can create a poster or a flyer if necessary. So I know that we all take tons and tons of photos of our pets. So I highly doubt that you'll have an issue trying to find a picture. I know I wouldn't, I probably have about 7,000 of them, but just, if you're not a big picture taker, just take one or two good pictures of your pet and just have them in case you ever need them. Um, the other thing you're going to want to do is if you're going to take your ferret outside and you're going to use a leash or and you're going to try to walk your ferret or any of that, make sure that you're not using a regular collar. A regular collar that goes around the neck is not going to, they're going to come right out of that most of the time. Um, they're just not safe and they're not secure and they're not good for walking your ferret around. Um, if I put one of those on any of my ferrets, they would be out of it in a second. It's very fast. So there's honestly the harnesses that I would recommend um, more than anything else. There's is really just the eight point harness or the H harness. So they there's these, um, they look like this. And basically they make these for small pets. So you're gonna wanna get it for a small pet. If you try to get it for a cat, it's probably gonna be too big. So these adjust. Um, so if you got one of those chunky little buddies like Bear, you could make it bigger. And if you got a little tiny buddy like my Weasel, you can make it smaller. So, um, and then it, you know, that's, so these are great. And then these go around the, the, you know, the body and the neck. So this is a much more secure harness. It's harder for them to get out of this. Um, so when Weasel was younger though, he, and he's a pretty small little guy. I don't know why he's just tiny. I use this. They make these kind of for bunnies too, but I use this on him and I really liked it because he could not get out of this. He got out of every harness I ever used except for this one. He's too big for this now, but when he was younger, um, this is great for like your baby or little smaller ferrets. Basically it's kind of like a little vest. It's super, it's super cute. So it looks like this. And then obviously it um, would Velcro in around the neck and around the belly. And then in addition to the Velcro, you can just snap it and then that's adjustable. So it's similar to the one I just showed you, but it's just kind of more like a vest. Um, and I, I think I got this at the pet store, so it wasn't very expensive, maybe like six or seven bucks. And I think it came with a leash or you can get super cute and fancy. And I got this for Lucy. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. They don't wear these, they hate them, but it's got wings, you guys. It's adorable. It's basically the same thing, except it's a vest with wings because we know Lucy's an angel and Ruby, they're, they're, they have these. So those are the harnesses um, or the, the like the collars that I would recommend if you're gonna walk your ferret. Uh, they're going to be your safest bet. It's going to be something that they just can't get out of, and that's just safer. And you can get those either online or at the pet store, pretty much anywhere. Um, the cute ones you're probably going to find online and not so much at the pet store. Uh, so those are that's what I would recommend. And then if you're going to use any kind of pen, like um, animal pen outside, I recommend that you get something with vertical bars. Do not get something that they can climb up. Um, any kind of regular baby gates, any kind of Pet, like play pens or dog pens that have any kind of bars that are that, that are horizontal they will be up and over that in a new york minute just two seconds flat 
So um, I will put a link to the one that I use in the description if you want. They are kind of expensive. If you get them on sale, that's the best way to go. Hint, hint, don't pay full price at Petco. They're outrageously expensive, but you can get them cheap when they're on sale. Ferret proofing is like so key in a lot of this situations. Um, even when you take your ferrets outside, it's really, really important that you keep your ferret as protected as possible. If there is any way that your ferret is can get into holes, get underneath your stoves, get inside of your um, vents, all of that, like unfortunately, there's a good possibility that they will try that. They are just inquisitive. They like to hide. They like small spaces. They like anything they're not supposed to have. Um, they don't know that they're not supposed to have it, but it's like, I feel like if I try to keep my ferrets away from something, um, they work really hard to go towards that thing. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of like small children a little bit. Um, so ferret proofing is really, really, really important. And I'll put a link to my ferret proofing video in the description um, so that you guys can check it out if you're interested in ferret proofing and you just wanna know more about it. So those are my recommendations for kind of what you can do maybe to just be prepared so that if anything happens, you're prepared. And then also what is best to use if you're gonna take your ferret on a walk outside or just let them play outside in general. All right, you guys, that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please, please, please subscribe um, and click the notification bell so you don't ever miss an upload or video from yours truly. <laughs> um, thank you for watching and have a great week.